Hey T Heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. I have to confess, I am already very tea drunk because I've just spent the last hour comparing this Dwenny clay teapot with all of the other clays around me and basically doing a clay comparison video. You know those videos if you've seen them before where I go through every single tea type and you can see how much tea I've already drunk today. Every single tea type is in this bowl. I compare each tea type and uh, see which clay performs best so that I can give you some pointers, some suggestions. And it's very important to say that every teapot is different and every body is different. So these are just suggestions about which tea you might prefer with which clay. But I've had to stop filming and basically reset because I found myself repeating the same thing again and again and again regarding this mind-blowing clay here um, for all of the different tea types. And rather than making you sit through an hour of me saying the same thing for every tea type, I thought what I would do is I would give you the overall conclusion and then just do one tasting with this Da Hong Pao, this Empress Oolong, which is just fresh in stock, which I actually haven't tasted yet. So a good way for me to finish this mega session. So let's look at this teapot now. This is a golden Dwenny, that's Huang Jin Dwenny clay. This is uh, from Yixing. This is from the Huanglongshan Mountain, so the original mine, you might call it Benshan Huang Jin Dwenny. And uh, you can see the shape. This is the lantern shape or tribute lantern shape. It's got a lovely design on the front. And on the back, this is a half handmade pot, 160 mil approximately. Wonderful, wonderful size. Construction is excellent on this. Really nice, tight fitting lid, considering it's a half handmade. And if you don't know what that means, it means it's still made by hand, but they use some mold. So it's not made completely from the mind of the uh, of the potter. Instead, they use some molds and then and then uh, use their hands to, to sort of hammer the clay into those molds and then they have to join it together. So it's still what would normally be considered a handmade pot, but in the terminology of uh, clay pots in China, this is a half handmade because molds are being used. As I said, this is Huang Jin Dwenny clay. So um, that is one of the broad types of Yixing clay. The other ones are, just so I'll put them out in front of you. So the broad types, and I will do a video about Yixing clay that dives a little bit more into the detail of this, but the broad types are the uh, Zeni, the purple clay, the Hongni, which is a red clay of which there is Juni, which is this, this is a Juni uh, pot, um, and Dweni. So those are the three broad categories and you know, people have different opinions about how to categorize the clays. But this is a golden Dweni, so that's a particular type of Dweni, uh, Huangjin Dweni. You can see it's got this very speckled look to it and it is a very porous clay. And as you'll see uh, when I talk about, you know, the results of my uh, hour long tasting, it really has a very pronounced effect on the tea. So I've been comparing it against the Tokaname, against the Yixing, uh, sorry, Nishing. I've been comparing it against Chaozhou Lanterns, fresh in stock, and Jenshui, and the Zerni, and the Juni. Um, and as I said, I was just repeating myself. So before I get into my overall conclusions, let's just quickly run through the temperature retention because I always do this for all of my clay comparison videos. You can see here the temperature retention of the other main clays that we've tested before. And what I've basically done is heated the pot up with boiling water, um, allowed it to sit and really heat up poured that water away, then refilled it with boiling water, put a temperature probe in, and then sort of balanced the lid on top so it's not gonna be perfectly um, accurate because there is gonna be more heat escaping um, than in sort of brewing situations uh, because obviously the lid would be fully closed. Um, and you can see here the, the temperature retention. And you can see that the Zerni has the most uh, shallow gradient, which means it loses its temperature um, at the slowest rate. So here is this part, this is the Huangjin Dweni. You can see the temperature retention is very similar to the Zerni and uh, very, very similar gradient. 
but slightly lower. I couldn't get the temperature up to the same starting temperature, um, even though you know it was left with boiling water in there. Uh, maybe you need to really um, you know have it sit with boiling water and keep pouring boiling water over the top if you wanted to really bring up that starting temperature. But the takeaway here is that it has excellent heat retention um, and um, therefore um, is going to be maintaining a high temperature for a long period of time. Now that suits some teas more than other teas. Um, and generally, this is how I sort of usually break it down. And you can see uh, which teas I think are more suited to hotter, uh, longer brews, for example, your Shang Pua, especially your raw, uh, your aged Shang Pua and your cooked uh, Pua, your Shu Cha and your Yen Cha. Um, but this again, these are sort of very broad strokes. You don't have to, um, you know, uh, it doesn't necessarily apply to every single tea and every single clay and every single brewer, but these are sort of broad strokes. And then what I normally do is I compare uh, the different clays and see how the minerality of the clay uh, interacts with the tea and whether or not um, it produces a favorable result. In other words, whether or not there's a matching of the minerality and what are the softening and thickening effects of the clay on the tea. And so let me just give you my conclusion right now. This Dweni teapot, and I'm specifically referring to this Dweni teapot because it's going to have a, there's going to be a difference depending upon the type of Dweni and the firing temperature. So my conclusions may not uh, match perfectly with other Dweni teapots out there, but this Dweni teapot has minerality, which I think is remarkably transparent. And what I mean by that is I think that it matches all the tea types, all of the tea types that I tried, even greens, Japanese greens, Chinese greens, white teas, I did not feel that there was any mismatch with the minerality. It's a relatively transparent teapot when you are talking about simply the um, addition of minerality. However, the effect on thickening, softening, and sweetening the tea is profound. It is um, by far the most strong effect in terms of softening and sweetening. And I would say that it's up there with the Zernies in terms of thickening. So whatever tea you put in this pot from the experiments that I've just been doing over the last hour, it will make it thicker. It will make it softer. It will make it sweeter. It will also be relatively transparent in its minerality and remarkably the high notes, in other words, those bright aromatics and tastes are preserved very well uh, compared against uh, harder clays like the Chaozhou and even porcelain. Well, we'll do the porcelain test uh, very shortly. So it maintains high notes, it thickens, it softens, it sweetens, and the minerality is nearly transparent, at least with this pot. And so you must be thinking, well, it's the wonder pot, it does everything. And you would be right that this is an incredible all-star pot. However, there is one very, very distinct effect that this has. And this, and, and that is that it, it shaves off, not just shaves off, it punches a hole straight through um, certain flavor attributes of the tea. And those would be more of the middle range and specifically woody notes, stony notes, like very sort of minerally notes. And it also incredibly softens dryness and astringency. And that might be an amazing effect that you really, really enjoy. But however, you may want your tea to have a bit more bite and have more of those woodsy notes and have more of those stony notes. So it sort of depends upon how you are approaching your session and which uh, kind of session you want to, to have. But the overall conclusion on this Dwayne teapot is that no matter which tea you put in it, it's like you are using the softest and sweetest water possible. It reminds me a lot of drinking tea in China where they have very, very soft water and everything tastes like it's uh, like sugar has been added. It softens and sweetens and makes the tea super drinkable because all of those 
let's say, a little bit more hard notes, like the woody notes, the stony notes, and the astringency have been taken away or attenuated to a remarkable, remarkable degree. And so every tea you put in it becomes really, really easy drinking, quaffable tea. You can drink and drink and drink with this teapot. But as I said, you might not want that. You might want a tea which has more physicality, has more dryness, has more astringency, and has more of those punchy middle notes, in which case this is definitely not the clay that you would be pulling out. So if you look at the chart, I will put that you can basically use this pot for everything. Here we go. This is our Chidan Empress Sulong. It's just come in. I have not tasted it yet. So I thought I would pull this one out. And the reason why I'm pulling this one out is because as we know, Yen Cha with its uh, roast and with its um, Yen rock minerality, Yen means uh, rock, uh, it is rich in woody notes, mineral notes and roast. And so I think that you, you've got a real contender in this Dwenny for an amazing pot for Yensha um, to soften, round out and thicken. Maybe it's gonna punch too much of a hole in, in the tea uh, for my taste, we will see. Ah, oh. oh, really fruity this year's Emperor Sulong. Uh, yes, it's got the red fruit that you would expect like uh, Mm, red currants, a bit of dried raisins, but it's also got a distinct stone fruit quality like peaches. Um, it's got that fudgy, sweet, creamy note, and then the charcoal with a little bit of sort of rum cask in there. Oh, it's a lovely balanced smell. First time I'm trying this since it arrived. Let's crank the water temperature up to uh, near 100 degrees or boiling point. Um, so I've got the same tea here that's now been rinsed. Um, let me smell the wet leaf while we're here. Wow, really, really, really peachy. Very, very fruity. Starting to move a little bit more into the Chilan uh, or even slightly Dan, Dansong style sort of high bright fragrance but of course underpinned with that longan wood charcoal roast which makes it sweet it makes it um woody but the woodiness is a, is a sweet wood it's like a a sweet spiciness to it really lovely here we go let's give this a quick rinse and you can see this pot in action although i've just been watching it in action for the past hour it was a difficult decision, but I just found myself repeating the same words again and again and again. Soft, sweet, thick, luxurious in the mouth, uh, maintains the high notes, removes astringency, and um, punches a hole in the sort of woody stone mineral uh, parts of the tea or, or, or aromatics. And uh, as I said, the dryness is majorly softened. Yeah, smells different there compared to the guy one. Smells more woody and more uh, of, the, of the bake. But I have a very distinct feeling that that is gonna change. All right, so we're gonna brew up in this pot, this Tribute Lantern Golden Dwenny Teapot. And then we're gonna go in porcelain just so that we can do a comparison. I have not actually compared it with porcelain. I've been comparing it with <laughs> all of these other clays around me. Um, so this is gonna be interesting to see at what level it maintains those high bright aromatics because it certainly was doing a really good job during uh, my previous tastings. <clears throat> Here we go. It's got a really nice pour, really tight fitting lid. Um, I'm very impressed with the, the level of detail and skill in uh, this 20. And it's filled with leaves, but I could, if you turn it over, you'll see that it's very, very flat here. So a lovely 
a lovely shape, very, very flat between the spout, the handle and the lid. Okay, let's pour the guy one version here and let's pull out these cups. We will keep the Dwayne front and center. Okay, so let's do porcelain first. Cheers everybody, my first taste of 2021 uh, Empress Oolong. Oh, so fruity. Uh, uh, yeah, a really great combination of uh, dried cranberries, dried cherries, and then peach, lots of peach, and a really um, distinct and enjoyable mineral rocky uh, feel in my mouth that leads to a sweet juiciness. And this is going to be what's interesting. Is the Dwayne going to take too much of that away and it's no longer going to feel uh, like, a, like a proper Yen Cha experience? Mm. Really, really lovely. Okay. Here we go with the Dwayne. Again, sorry for the repetition. So soft, like vaporous, it's so soft. It's, it, 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 it feels like it's the softest water. I don't know what the minerals do, but the interaction is quite remarkable. Very, very soft, very, very thick, very, very smooth. No dryness. Just extremely sweet, especially um, after I've uh, swallowed. Sweet on the tip of my tongue. And it's not the same sweetness that I'm getting in terms of this sort of juicy sweetness that comes from mineral release. In other words, mineral brings dryness and that releases uh, saliva and that saliva has a sweeter sort of taste to it. This is, it genuinely feels or genuinely tastes like somebody sprinkled a bit of sugar in uh, my tea. And that has been the case for all of the teas, including like brothy Japanese green teas. It just tastes like some sugar has been added. It's, it's been a remarkable uh, hour, I have to say. So positives, sweet, soft, thick. Um, the high notes are maintained. I'm still getting those um, dried cherries and peaches. But what has been taken away, and again, depends on whether or not you want that taken away or not, is that mineral, how can I describe this? You know when you get a mineral water that's really rich in minerals, it has a sort of sharp, quality in the mouth, like a, like a, a slating, slated sort of quality in the mouth. It, it, yes, it brings about dryness, but there's a distinct sort of, would you call it a taste? Would you call it a sensation? I don't know, but a sort of sharpness to the, uh, like a, a sharpness to the image. You know, it's like I've turned the sharpness up on, on an image or uh, of the TV. So it's slightly, uh, um, aggressive, although this one's not aggressive, it can get aggressive, but it's, it's, it's very sharp. Very clean, if that makes sense, not in a sort of uh, versus dirty, but the, the experience has a very sort of clean, refreshing, slaty sort of um, taste. And then when I taste from the Dwayne, that has literally been dialed down from, if that's a 10, it's been dialed down to a three. It's really, really down. And this is why it's very, very difficult for me to say, Dwayne is great for this tea. Because Dwayne, or this Huangjin Dwayne, is great for all teas if you want a very soft, luxurious, thick and sweet experience. And it just makes the tea super drinkable super drinkable. You can just drink and drink and drink. And I would say that if you have somebody who you are drinking with who may be 
are maybe they're starting out in tea or maybe they are a little bit averse to some of the more aggressive notes of tea. I say aggressive with, you know, uh, inverted commas because, you know, if it's a good tea, it should not be overly aggressive, but you know what I mean. If you have some of those uh, tea drinkers that when you sit down and you drink with them, they're, oh, it's a bit too dry or it's a bit too punchy, then just brew them a tea, any tea in this dueni, and it would be super easy drinking. This is, this is the pot that you bring out that will make every session an easy drinking session. And when I say easy drinking, that comes with a warning because just like those cocktails that are very, very easy to drink and put down, I, I have a feeling that this is gonna get you very, very uh, tea drunk if you have the right tea with a lot of aggression that you just, it's, so so, it's been softened so much that you can drink a lot of it. And I think that aged raws are gonna be amazing in this teapot. Yeah, I would say that the top notes, those really high aromatics, I would say if that's a 10, then that's sort of an eight. So yes, yeah, it's softened it a little bit, but not much. But um, in terms of the woodiness and the, uh, the, the um, mineral feel and taste, that has been dialed down a lot. One more infusion. So, one of the sort of ironies, I would say, about this Dwenny teapot is that it's so transparent in terms of its uh, interaction of mineral taste, not the, you know, all the things that I've been talking about, but it's so sort of suited to all tea types that it is the perfect sort of candidate for an all-star pot, a pot for all of your teas. However, my suspicion is that because of the uh, effect in terms of its, um, all the things I've said, softening, thickening, sweetening, and punching a hole in those uh, minerals and woodsies and stonies, stony notes, because that effect is so pronounced, I think that this is a very porous pot and therefore will season really, really, really well. So I think out, I think out of all of the clays in front of me, this one is, on the one hand, the perfect all-star pot, and on the other hand, the perfect pot to save for one tea type because it will season, I think, really, really in quite a strong way. And that will mean that it's going to be adding more and more flavor to your teas. So if you, for example, reserved it as a, uh, as a teapot just for aged Shang Pua, I think it would, um, after a, after a, you know, a fair amount of use, it would be an amazing uh, seasoned pot that would contribute some of, some extra flavor to your um, aged Shang Pua's. However, because of the fact that this tea pot makes all teas drinkable, quaffable, and just <sighs> soft and luxurious, I think that I'll be reserving this one for an all-star. I may treat myself, go grab another one. I'm gonna go and test it with some um, aged raw pu'ers and see if I'm correct um, in my assumption. If it is as mind-blowing as I think it will be, then I may just treat myself to another one from the warehouse and have one as an all-star and one as my uh, aged Shang Pua pot. One more sip of this. Just so sweet. I just cannot get over how sweet it is. Oh, I could just drink from this pot all day. Just one more comparison with the second infusion. Yeah. I would prefer this one over this one, just simply because of the luxurious nature of this brew. Um, However, it really depends upon what you're looking for in your session. The Dwenny pot sort of breaks all the rules in terms of my clay comparisons. I can't give you a sort of very specific Dwenny is good for this tea. It suits all teas, all sessions, as long as you want to have an easy drinking 
soft, sweet, and luxurious brew. Let me know your thoughts on Dwenny in the comments section below. And as I said, I will try to do another clay comparison video with the Yixing's Dwenny versus Zerni versus Juni. That will be sometime next year. That's it, T-Heads. Check out our other videos, Taste Our Teas, wherever you're in the world by browsing mayleaf.com and come visit us if you're ever in London. Other than that, I'm Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.